All right, welcome to part seven of my series on indexed DB. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about using indexes. So last episode, we talked about creating them. This time, we're going to use indexes and use key ranges. So what I did uh, following the last episode to set up for this one, I created a couple of new indexes. In the last episode, we created a name and a country one. I've added one for the age property, and I added one for a property that I just added into the data. And I've called the index edit. The property in the data that I put it on is a property called last edit. And this is just a timestamp. So if I shrink this down a little bit, we can see this is a timestamp for when the last edit was made to this piece of data. And I put different values inside of here. I just put some dummy data in uh, for the last edit values spanning over the last several days. So we've got the key values here. These are going to be the values that are used to sort the field. That's what the indexes are doing. So if I want to retrieve the data based on the age, you can see it's displaying here in the sorted age. Name, sorted by name, country, it's sorted by country. The last edit date, it's sorted by the timestamp. So whatever the property is, whatever the field is that we're talking about, this is the sort order. So I can display this if I use the index to call my get all method instead of just going to the store and saying, okay, give me everything. With get all, it's going to sort it by the key path if I go to the store. However, if I go to the store and then select one of these indexes, I'm selecting pre sorted data from there. So let's take a look at how to do that. Um, in my update, I made a couple of changes since the last video. So in my updated upgrade needed function here. Uh, what I did was I wrapped the delete inside of the contain. So just if I'm actually doing an update, it will delete the old version. If I'm not doing an update, if it's the first time, I'm still going to be creating the object store. And then here are my four indexes. So the name, the country, the age, and the edit. Those are done. And then in the data, like I said, I added this last edit field to every one of the objects. So that's my test data. Now let's actually use these indexes. Just before we call the get all, I want to make sure when I do updates, when I do add of new records, I want to make sure that I'm putting data into this. So if I've got a new value, uh, a new whiskey that I'm adding to the database, it needs to have a value for this. If I'm doing an update, I want to make sure that I don't lose that value. So I added one line into each one of my update and add functions. And that is right here in the whiskey object. I've added last edit. So I make sure that I'm putting that property in there. I don't lose it. And I'm setting it to date dot now. So the current timestamp that's going to be in the update. And here's the add. I did the same thing. All we're doing is adding this one field to whenever we add, whenever we do an update, get the current timestamp and stick it in there. So those are the changes that have been made. Now I want to run down to my build list function. And right now, this is what we're doing. We're going to the store and saying, get all the records. There's no filter on it. I'm just saying whatever order they were put in there, that's the order that I'm going to use to pull them out. So they're sorted by their ID that was created when they were put in. Okay. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to comment that one line out. We still need the store. I still need to go to the whiskey store. But once I've got the store, I'm going to get an index. So I will say store.index. And then which one of the ones do we want to use? It can be any one of these. So age, name, country, edit. Let's use the age first. Try that one out. So age ID X. That was the name of it. Once I've done that, I'm going to call get all, but I'm not calling it on store. I'm calling it on index. So my get request is my index dot get all. There we go. Save that. Now, if I look at the data, these are now sorted in the order of their age. So this order right here is the order that they were retrieved and loaded. If I switched over to the um, edit index, Now 
now these are sorted by this order. So the LIGO Woolen 16 is the one at the bottom. It is the same order, <laughs> ironically, as the age one, but it is sorted by this order right here. Okay, so we've got these different indexes that we can use. I'm going to go back to the age one because it's easier to see the numbers. Okay, so we're dealing with the age index, this order right here. If I wanted to filter that, if I wanted a subset, like right now I'm saying get everything that is inside the index just sorted by this order. But if I wanted to say, you know what, I only want things that are between say one and five years old. So I've got three is the only one that's going to show up there. If I want to do that, what I have to do is I have to create a key range. So we need to create a key range. Now this is using one of these interfaces. If we look in the MDN documentation for index DB, down here at the bottom, you'll see all these related pages, they all start with IDB. These are all interfaces. And an interface means that there's no constructor method. It's not that I create a new index or I create a new key range. Um, there's some other method that's going to give me an object. And in the case of the key range, I've got a few methods. I've got lower bound, upper bound, or bound, or only. These are going to give me a range or a single value to match against. So I need to call one of these methods. If I did lower bound, there's two values I can put in here. One is, what is the lowest possible value that I'm willing to accept? So I want this or anything higher. So let's say 14. And then we have a Boolean value that comes in here. So this is going to be true or false. If it is false, it means include this number. If it's true, it means skip this number. So I'm going to say false. And that's going to mean 14 or higher. If I said true, that would mean 15 or higher. All right, so I've got my key range created. And then to use this on the index, it could be used on get all as well. So the key ranges can be in here or in here. Anytime I use get all, I'm allowed to put in a key range. So let's put in the range here. And now when I refresh this, what I get is just that. There's the numbers 14 and 16. If we change this to the true, so false meant that, and true means I don't get the 14, I only get the 16. So there's lower bound, there's upper bound, and there's also just the bound method. And I can provide two values. So I can say, okay, from one to 10, and if I put false for both of these, I'm including one and 10 as possible values. There we go. And we get the three and the eight. And that's it. That's how you create ranges, so key ranges, and how you would use the index. So the range goes into the get all method, and the index says which one of your sorted versions of the data do you want to use to apply this range to. So if you're used to a relational database and you're using uh, the order by or the where clauses, we're using indexes and key ranges to do the same sort of operation to sort and filter our data. Okay, so I hope that helps you out. Um, please experiment with that. This is going to work with strings, it works with numbers, it works with um, our timestamps, it works with um, booleans, you can say you only want the trues or you only want the falses. But remember, create the indexes on the things where you know you're going to be um, sorting the data, that you will be retrieving things based on that sorted order. 
you don't need to create an index for every single column. Think about what your interface is going to do. Once you have that figured out, that is the indexes that you're going to need. Whatever is going to be in your interface, create an index so you can achieve that. All right. So I uh, hope that helps you out. We've got one more video in the series talking about using cursors in conjunction with indexes and ranges. So that's going to be the next video coming up, and that'll be the last one. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.